Remember, my name is uh, Kevin P. Scanlon, K-E-V-I-N. P is in Patrick, S-C-A-N-L-A-N. Perfect. Um, and your role and who you're with? I am the 2019 president of the Austin Board of Realtors, and I'm also the owner and broker of All City Real Estate. Awesome. Um, and again, you can look at me the whole time. Okay. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about, you know, what is the housing market like in the Austin area? Uh, the greater Austin housing market is very strong right now. Even though in the fall and winter we tend to have some downturn where the numbers aren't quite what they are in the spring and summer, it's actually been a very strong fall and winter this year. And I think it foretells a little bit of what's to come. We're going to have another good year in the housing market in Austin. Um, and kind of in comparison, how good and how strong is Austin's market? So both the rental market and the sales market are very strong right now. Typically Austin ranks in the top five or in the top ten of most of the lists that come out in terms of our uh, housing market as well as our economic strength. We have a very broad economic base here in Austin and with the new Apple facility that will be coming in along with the other high-tech companies that are already staples here in addition to being the capital and having a dozen universities here, it really adds to the strength of our economic base, which is, of course, going to help have a more stable housing market. Um, and kind of how long has this, it's been increasing pretty steadily, right, over the past few years? Going on about six years. We started coming out of the recession in 2012, and our numbers have been strong every year since. Um, there are folks in the industry who believe that it might be unsustainable at current rates of appreciation, and I have that fear to a certain degree. But again, because the economic base is so broad here in Austin, and we're not reliant on one industry in particular, that's going to add stability to the housing market moving forward. In addition to that, the quality of life here in Austin, we're typically one, two, or three on the uh, most uh, favorable cities to live in. Because the quality of life is so strong here, the increase in home prices over the last few years have really just brought us up to where we need to be in terms of home prices, and I don't believe that they're overvalued at this point. Um, and you touched on it a little bit, but want to kind of spell it out for people. What would you say has a few things that have really led to Austin's strong market, you know, that that's increasing prices, increasing rent for people? What is leading to all this? Well, I think Austin's reputation as a town that is, um, let me start over on this one. Um, because Austin has long been viewed as a liberal city, as a city that has a dynamic uh, cultural outlook, in addition to our location geographically in the state and in the country, that's been very attractive not only for individuals but also for companies. The local government here is very favorable towards corporations and making attractive uh, propositions for those corporations to bring their business here to Central Texas. So I think it's been a confluence of circumstances that has really created the boom town that Austin is today. Um, and so there's a new study that came out, a new report, saying that Austin, it's, it's had a crazy increase in the um, price of rent for people. So. Compared to the national average, it's it's one of the top ten in the country for mm -hmm. how quickly um, rent is mm -hmm. going up. I mean, a what is what do people need to know about this? And b like what leads to rent increasing, leasing, and all of that. Well, one of the largest contributing factors to rent increasing over the past several years, year over year, is the fact that the Chamber of Commerce says that more, more than 150 people move to Austin every single day. So that, of course, is going to have an impact not only on the availability of rental property, but also on the prices. And the Austin increase in 2018 was about 10% more than the national average increase. But still, you have to consider that 
because Austin has been a destination for both for residents coming from both coasts, both the West Coast and the East Coast, we're still well underneath those values in terms of what you're going to have to pay for an average apartment here in Austin. So even though our increase was more significant in 2018 than the national average, Austin is still well within a reasonable range, especially when you compare it to East Coast and West Coast uh, rental markets. And would you say it's really a game of supply and demand? A hundred percent, yes. Uh, the supply in Austin um, in terms of rental properties has been dwindling for the last few years, even with the national bird of Austin, which is the cranes that we see all over building new rental properties. Um, the supply is being outpaced because of the sheer number of people who are moving to Austin because it's so attractive as a destination. So, I mean, it can't compare to the number of people that are coming in. Right, right. exactly, yes. So, so the, num the number of people moving to Austin uh, on a yearly basis is outpacing the supply that uh, Austin has to offer in terms of rental properties, and that's why you're seeing the increase. Um, I mean, so is all of this, are you at all surprised by that figure saying that um, Austin the, the rent is increasing so strongly in this Austin area um, that it's above the national average? Is that from what it, you're it's not surprising at all because of how attractive Austin is as a destination city, especially I would say that probably ha half of our clients within my company uh, who are relocating to Austin from out of state are coming from the West Coast and the prices there are just out of whack. And here in Austin, our prices are a lot more reasonable in their eyes, in the, folks, in the eyes of the folks who are moving here because they're paying so much for places on the West Coast compared to here. So absolutely, the, the supply is definitely dwindling due to the influx of, of people moving to Austin. Now, I mean, how do you, how does anyone regulate this? Who's kind of in charge of the numbers here? It's, it's free market, you know? It's what, what are buyers willing to pay to, to, to move to this town? And as with any large city, the closer you get to downtown, the less you get for the money, the stronger the market is. And so that's why you see small one bedroom or even studio apartments in the downtown area going for well over $2,000 a month because people are willing to pay that to be in this city. Um, and that's a, I don't know, how long have you been in the Austin area for? I've been in Austin for 30 years, yeah. So I mean, you've seen a big change. Years ago. I have. This was a sleepy little town when I moved here in the 80s and uh, beginning really with the tech boom in the late 1990s, early 2000s, the city started to see a change in its reputation from a, a, a sleepy live music town into a tech destination, into a destination for uh, professionals who wanted to start a family, who wanted a milder climate who wanted to move away from the boom that was unsustainable going on on the West Coast and on the East Coast. Um, and that being said, I mean, 30 years ago, could you even give me an estimate of like what prices, you know, what prices might have been like back then compared to now? Back in the 80s? Yeah. I mean, that's really reaching. It is reaching. Um, or they don't have to be numbers, but um, guesstimation of like the jump. I can give you an example of the very first house that I bought in Austin in 2002. Okay. And what that's worth now. Okay. Would yeah, that be good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, to give you an example of the rates of appreciation that I've seen in my 18 years in real estate, I can tell you that the very first house that I bought in the early 2000s was located in a neighborhood called Cat Mountain, which is about 10 minutes from downtown. And this was a 2,000 square foot home, a little bit of a fixer-upper, 
but a beautiful neighborhood and with a great location. And I bought that house for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, renovated it, ended up selling, moving into a bigger house a few years later. And today, that house would be worth about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, just fifteen years later. So, it's it's been quite a ride here in Austin and. We can expect rates of appreciation to continue to rise for the next couple of years because of that broad economic base, but I don't anticipate the rates of appreciation to be as steep as they have been over the last few years, and that's a good thing because that type of growth and appreciation is unsustainable, and that's what leads to real estate bubbles, and I don't think that Austin is in any danger of that type of a catastrophe. So you're saying, basically, because I was going to ask, what's, what's kind of next? What's the trend? What's happening next in the next five to ten years? Um, and even in the 2040, because we're kind of looking mm -hmm. that far mm -hmm. ahead, uh, you see a steady increase? Roughly? I do see an increase in home values continuing uh, over the next five to ten years. I, I don't think that we're in danger of a bubble, and I believe that that is because that our economy here is based on several large industries that all contribute to a very stable economic base. And the property values that we're seeing right now, Austin has a median home value hovering around $300,000. When you consider the quality of life in Austin versus that median home price, it compares very favorably to other cities around the country where you're going to have to pay double, triple, quadruple that for just an average home in those cities that, are, that have experienced booms that are indeed unsustainable and history has borne that out. And one of my last questions is just, I mean, with the increase in um, focusing on like, rent and leasing in particular, um, what are some of like, the positive things that can come from this increase and some of the concerns with, I don't know, maybe how quickly it's happening or just what you're seeing in particular? Sure. Well, I would say that the biggest positive impact or the, the biggest positive, let's see, let's start over. Um, I would say that the biggest positive to take away from significant increases in rent, like we saw in 2018, is the fact that our economy is still very strong. The housing market is still very strong. Austin is still a destination that uh, folks would like to move to from other parts of the country. And that's going to bode well for the coming years. The fact that Austin is still such a favorable place for, for people to move. And I would say that the negative is uh, the impact of affordability because that's been a huge topic at City Hall, it's been a huge topic in the real estate industry in general, is that the rates of appreciation both for the sales market and the rental market are making Austin less affordable for the average person, for the average household income. So a balance of the pro and the con there uh, would be that we come to a point where there's enough affordable housing, both sales and rentals, to sustain the growth that Austin should continue to see in its population. Uh, anything else? I think we covered it. Yeah, we covered it.